Hi, so I'm back on your screen to deliver Tre Valli Veracina. Uh, it's a classic Italian one-day race. I believe it's the 100th of the year outfit. Uh, anyway, this is the break. Lorenzo Rota, Uran, Paripontra, Oliveira, Cron, De Marchi. Um, <clears throat> really, and Formula. People to watch out for. Paripontra obviously won a stage in the Vuelta. Very good lad. Formolo again winning stages like in Paris Nice last year, um, and they're just cruising along. And obviously, Demarkey as well in a pink jersey. Blasov behind is absolutely killing himself. I'm not really sure who uh, for. And then you've got Higita, couple Androni boys, Hershey, Pogaccia, Ineos Noah to be seen. And then you've got Benoit Kosnifwa, who just is chilling. Um, and yeah, he's doing a big turn here, Alexander Blasov. 25 seconds, 23k to go. I'm telling you now, if this was a dry race, it wouldn't be a competition. It would obviously be a sprint. However, because it's wet, it's interesting. Big risks can be taken on the downhill. It can be won or lost. And anyway, here's Kron doing a lot of work early on, really trying to set, you know, get rid of people left, right, and center. Uran gets dropped early. DeMarkey says, cheerio, boys, I'm off um, to chunt this down. And Formula reacts straight away. Then Parry um, and then Lorenzo Roto as well, as well as a Movistar rider. Um, and, you know... At this point, you think Andreas Kron again, he's, I'm pretty sure he won a stage in Swiss, in Swiss, didn't he? And then, you know, uh, Welter as well, and Catalonia, I think it was as well, you won a stage. Anyway, he's he's solid. Um, Formula and knee warmers is always a worrying sight. You've got to watch out for him. He always does well. Here's the group behind going up the same climb with 22k to go, and Sergio Higuita decides that, you know what, it is time to go. Um, and Higuita finds a gap and launches it. Cosnefoy is like, well, I've got to go. So he um, basically ends up chasing this down. Um, but in the end, nothing really happens. And I think ultimately none of the guys behind, you know, with a 40-second gap, the, the emphasis has gone up the chase. So you're like, okay, attacking is good. Tade Pogac is now closing the gap as well with Cosnefoy on his wheel. Um, and at this point, you're like, well, you know, are you going to bridge a 40-second gap? No. Cosnefoy is shouting out the mode. It's like to get out of the way. But I guess if you can bring an elite group clear, then maybe... But as I said, because it's wet, big risk on the descent and the brake were not messing around. And here you can see there's Iran um, is helping Higita. Obviously, he got dropped out of brake with Cosnefort on the wheel. But in the end, nothing really happens from this. And you can see it's all back together. Uh, Pierre Latour is there for direct energy. Always a classic. 12K to go again. We go to the brake with DeMarkey, who again on these climbs, it was just really up and down the whole day. Um, and Formolo again looking the strongest, really, of the rest of them. Parry Pontra is struggling to close this. Um, Kron lets him do it. Then Kron realizes that Parry Pontra can't do it. And then he then uh, doesn't end up closing. And nothing really happens. They just, you know, cause Lorenzo Rota uh, more and more difficulties, really. And uh, drop the Movistar boy. Um, but that's really it. And the gap, again, has gone down 15 seconds. So it's now only 30. Uh, but still, with 12k to go, you'd say, in a dry, you can probably bring it back. But because it's wet... Also, the team strength isn't as strong as it probably could be. Like, a lot of people behind. Like, here's another group going. Cosnefoy on the same descent. Um, so, on the same ascent, the brake just went up. Cosnefoy, Gaudu, and Pogaccia came across. But again, you've always got someone up the road. You know, pogaccia has got Formolo. And uh, Cosnefoy has got um, Parapontre. So, is he going to chase? Anyway, this is actually a big move with 10k to go. We sort of missed it. They just showed it. But DeMarkey decides it's time to go. Formolo closes it and no one else can go with him. And I think it's not tactics here. People are playing around a little bit with Paripontre. But personally, I think they just couldn't go with it. Because when he attacked, it was hard. And all the attacks, them two had been marking each other really well. And with 10k to go with 12 seconds, I think this is a perfect time to go on the attack. Because otherwise, good chance they're going to get caught. The emphasis has gone out the break. They're here in the direct of here. Like Paripontre will hear. Benoit's behind you. Probably just wait up. But with these two guys, you know... Formolo is going to have his teammates who can just sit on, and DeMarkey's got no teammates, so he might as well go for it. Like, there's nothing he's waiting for. So it makes 100% tactical sense for DeMarkey to go, and it meant Formolo as well, if you can follow. It is, this is the group behind Pogaccia, Gaudu, Cosnefoy, Hershey, Higuita. With Hershey and Pogaccia, they, I think, must have decided, yeah, yeah, Formolo, go for it, because they didn't do any pacing. It was more Gaudu than anyone else. This is the last climb of the day until really the finish, and up here, they were just draining blows left and right but no one really seemed like they actually had any sort of superiority and i think you'll see that into the final run in as well the gap again has come out to 16 seconds and to be honest it had pretty much at this point i think everyone knew it was going to go to them too just because there's no one chasing like if you're um gaudu you're chasing for yourself 
There's Paraponcha, but if Paraponcha is strong enough, he'd be in this break. And because Paraponcha is in this break, you know he's not as strong as these boys, which means if he's chasing one of them against two, there's just not going to close it. Like, the maths just isn't there. Um, and look at this. This is why I showed a big risk in the corner by Formula flying down the descent. And if you look compared to this, I know it's a different corner, but you know, you can see they're not really railing the descent. And this is the thing, the gap's now up to 25 seconds. Um, when you're on your, like with two people, especially with Formula, he was really drilling it. Um, then, you know, you've got a good chance. Anyway, 1.6k to go. They're sort of messing around a little bit. They know they've probably got it and they start to attack each other. And I thought, Demarkey, why are you attacking? Okay, maybe, you know, you don't think you've got a sprint. Makes sense. Um, but I think both of them are pretty similar riders. Like, I wouldn't say one of them is obviously a better sprinter because Formula then goes over the top. These guys behind, Gaudu's just like, oi, do you actually want to do some work? And everyone's like, not really. We'll just call it a sprint for third, um, which I guess suits everyone, really, because no one's at... I mean, Paripontra is probably battered by this point because he's had to try and drill it back, and it's just not going to happen. Going under the Flamme Rouge here with, yeah, obviously a kilometre to go. Demarque again tries to attack, which I think underlines the fact that he really doesn't believe in his sprint at all, and that both him and Formula really are, like, not comfortable in this situation, and they much prefer to be on their own, because, you know, if one of them was obviously a sprinter, like one of these Sonic or Brady, for example, then, yeah, obviously it makes sense not to, to attack as much as possible, but with these two, it's sort of like, well, you either both gamble you've got to sprint, or you both gamble you want to get away, but... I think this climb's just not really hard enough. Like, they're now over it, and it's sort of just pan flat. And, like, to be honest, if someone's, like, similar ability to you, it is quite hard to shake them, like, unless it's a properly steep hill where you can just drill it for, like, a minute or something and then maybe get away. I mean, these guys behind, I mean, they're just gone. There's no real point in the camera actually showing any of them. It's all the cat and mouse up here. Two Italians going towards the final. Um, Formolo, I said, always said, watch out when he's in knee warmers. He just tends to go well in them. I don't, I don't know why, but I'm a big fan of him. He seems to have realized GC is not for him. He's come top 10 at Giro, but stage wins is where it's at. And he did take a big stage win last year in the old, Par uh, what's it called, Dauphiné. He's coming into the final, and I think Formolo has messed this up. He's leading it out. He's going pretty fast. He just tried to launch from the front. Nothing invented. And to be honest, it's basically a heads-up sprint. And Demarkey, like, just goes early, but just is stronger, really. And Formula, I thought, oh, he's coming back here, but nah. The Marquis just got it, and it's a, a decent bike length at this point. And there's nothing we can really do at this point. I mean, both of them are just battered. Like, there's no way that they can actually attack each other anymore. Like, it's just come down to who's the strongest man in the end, and ultimately it was Alessandro De Marquis. So anyway, a big year for him in the pink jersey, finished second up to Sestola um, with Joe Dombrowski winning that stage. We're going to watch the run-in, because Benoit Cosnefo, I thought, would batter everyone. But a bit of a jinx by Tadej Pogacar. Pogacar hops through a gap. Uh, and then Cosnefoir decides that actually Andreas Kron is the wheel to go. I think potentially a mistake. Cosnefoir accelerates really hard here. And I think he has it. But actually Pogacar comes on the inside and just nicks him. Um, maybe Hagita was a bit disappointing. But anyway, that is Tre Valley Varesina 2021. Cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy. As always, leave us a like and a subscribe. And any comments on any future races that are done by these dodgy people who don't give it to Eurosport, because then I can commentate. Anyway, see you in the next one.